What's up, everybody? Today on Make It Cozy, we're gonna make this plastic press from stuff we found in the trash. Yeah. Take that, Jug. How do you like it now? Let's get in it. And here we go. I got my angle iron that I found on the side of the road because somebody was throwing away a bed frame. And as we all know, the cheap route is where I like to experiment. So instead of using a beam and also just buying cold rolled steel from the store, I'm gonna try to use this and hopefully try to use a lot of the, you know, like these pieces right here already have pieces drilled out, so to speak. So I'm gonna hope that I can use that to my advantage so that I can use the holes to put the threaded rod and stuff like that. So that, that way I can like, you know, mold pieces together. And so <clears throat> what I wanna try to do is get this cut and hopefully it cuts very well with the angle grinder. And I also wanna try to get these little things off right here because each piece, right? I don't know how this could be beneficial for my build, but just this piece would be, whereas this also would be, as well as the second piece that goes, that attaches to the normal bed frame. So, this depth between here and here is, uh, uh, I mean, it's rounded, so it's supposed to be an inch, but it's probably a little bit less, right? Maybe like seven eighths or something like that. And I got this guy, uh, spoiler alert from auction because that's what's up. And the top of the head right here is an inch. So I figured that's gonna be good enough. So like I said before, right? I wanna encompass, I'm thinking a two by three. I think that's probably gonna be the better bet Encompass the two by three with reinforcement from this guy using threaded rod and uh, associated nuts. And then that way I can build the top piece, the bottom piece, and then the guides that'll go on either side of the build here. So let's go ahead and get to that and get cutting, I suppose. So now that we have the pieces grinded away, I'm gonna try to separate, right, the legs right here. And then also you see there's like that little narble that I was taking off before so that I could separate the small angle from the large angle. This is my second round. And, you know, you always go to school on the first one. So let's go ahead and show you what I found to be easiest. I just take a metal punch, or sorry, a metal uh, chisel right there and a small punch and then I'm just gonna beat the devil out of it. But for these, I found it best. There's a little indention right here. It's cold. And so I just take this and my mallet, right? And I just pound that in there until it starts going through. And then that just goes away. This guy right here is a little bit tougher. It takes a little more coercion, but with the right inertia, you could do it all right. So I'm gonna punch it right here. It's just start moving it back and forth like this, just to get it loose. And then I just jam the, the screwdriver. This is just a flathead. I just jam this in here. I just work it until it comes out. Angle iron. <laughs> All right, we got it cut up, boom. We got four pieces. Uh, two of them are completely doodled, right? They got no narbles. These two still have narbles though. I don't know if I wanna keep these on here right now, but my gut is telling me, leave it until you know otherwise, and then we can knock, knock them off. I cut the long rail on either end to meet the same dimension as the pre-cut ones and all that I had left was about like a five six inch piece from both of them so that's pretty nice and I went ahead and took out all the narbles so that's why you have the grinder cut right there and I figured that the benefit was more with the pre-drill hole than to have a narble that may or may not interconnect but they didn't interconnect so hence why I took them off. I got a quarter inch threaded rod uh, and this is just from my scrap bin. So I have a lot of them from like other projects or whatever. So I figured I might as well just use them to keep the cost as low as possible. But serendipitous is that it 
drives right into the smallest hole. So it keeps me from drilling needlessly, which is gonna be nice because that's gonna be the next step anyhow. So I'll have to cut my two by three and I just cut them the same length, right? Just like 28 inches for the two pieces that are gonna mesh later on for the tops and for the bottom. That way it has a little bit more structural support and hopefully it doesn't buckle under the pressure later on, but it's all experiment and that's what the fun of this is, right? So we're gonna get that cut, go ahead and get the, any additional holes drilled for the threaded rod and then we'll get the skeleton put together. Gonna be in the same style as the get hands dirty brothers make situation. So I'm not gonna bog down with details because it's just drilling a lot of holes and once you've seen one, you've seen them all, right? So that way, I go ahead and make the base, get the jack mounted, put on the springs, do other crazy stuff with my hands, and then we can actually put this guy to the test. So let's go ahead and get rolling with that. Next. Boom. Press. Ready for pressing. But we're going to press on with a couple of uh, little ideas that I might help other individuals later on if they're trying to mimic the same kind of thing. First thing that you may have noticed as far as the top goes is that I did, in fact, remove these little corner braces. <coughs> corner braces. These were, you know, designed to keep the bed from sliding off or whatever, right? If that's what you're going with. I thought that maybe I could use these because they have, like, the holes. Not so much. They, um, they're not very square, for one. So the pieces that I was trying to recess in there didn't match up a lot. So I had to go in and drill a lot more holes than I was actually anticipating in the beginning. But that's okay because it's all a learning process, right? So this one, as you can see, right, I kind of had to, had to beat down a little bit. Needed a little bit more coercion because the angle grinder, I figured out, you know, I should have been taking them from the top right here and not from the inside part right there. My mindset was that I could just take the inside part boop, and beat it out that way with the press or whatever, or with the punch rather. Uh, not so much. It proved to be way more difficult than anticipated. So on the second one, I learned from it and I took the top parts off and then punched them the other way, which made it 10 times more easier. So those were gone and more holes were drilled. The next thing is that I realized once this started coming together a little bit more and I actually had the frame built and the base put together that I need a little bit more reinforcement. So I put some two by fours on the inside fronts right here and on the sides, you can kind of see right here that the side bit needed a little more, uh, kind of, you know, didn't carry the one on my cuts, but hey, it's all good because more reinforcement is better than less reinforcement. Other thing too, is that I started realizing with the longer profile height wise, uh, I needed some massive springs. The previous owners left their garage springs just chilling up here somewhere. And I was like, you know, hey, I thought, well, this one, you know, is clearly jacked up. Probably the reason why they had to re replace it in the first place. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just, you know, if you, if you bend them over, they've got a lot of give in them and they separate, right? So that's good. I figured, oh, I'll take my angle grinder to it, lob them in half. This one, all I need to do is just loop onto the eye bolt like I have right here, right? It's no big deal. I just have to modify this guy. Well, yes, they have a lot of springy spring to them. But they have a lot of hardness to them as well in terms of like trying to bend over the piece like this in order to hook onto my threaded rod right there. That proved to be very difficult. So luckily, uh, based on the inspiration for this guy, Get Hands Dirty already talked about how to modify springs for their book press, right? So I thought, okay, let's go ahead and do that. The first one, the, I figured this one's already jacked up anyways, I could just practice on that. And I was like, man, this is so tough. And it took me about an hour just to get it to that point. Once I got to the fourth one and I started getting the process down, it took me, I think 12 minutes, 12 to 13 minutes. And that's where a lot of the video clips are coming from that I'm talking about right here. So I had to definitely use like a lot of a lot of like fulcrums. My cold chisel, because it's cold outside, I figured, yo, the chisel will get in there. I pounded it in, and then using just the heat of the torch, the butane torch, um, it did keep its like memory of the springy spring. And then I just worked it until I got to a point to where like it was like separated enough from the piece, like uh, in terms of height, I guess. or And so that way I could just focus the flame on the part that I wanted to pivot and then I just beat the devil out of it with a hammer and my little tiny anvil. Not the prop one. The prop one would not work. But if you want to see a video on that, you can check it out. It's pretty cute. The Booyah special, that's what I'm talking about, right? So I just like put the spring. The spring is this way. The hook that I want to bend over is like right here. And then I just beat the devil out of it just to kind of get it to, you know, bend to my whim, literally. 
So check that out, that's pretty cool. One of the things that I had to be concerned about whenever I was doing the threads on this though, is that I used two nuts as like a locking nut type of situation when I should have actually used a locking nut. But I just had to be careful because like it is quarter inch. So like I didn't want to like over torque it and like bust it out or something like that. So just take your time and be careful with it. Other thing too, is that I flushed the bottom for the eye bolts so that there was no interferences with my box, my platform that I made. So this thing, I just made this real quick just to kind of raise the area. Right, because I'm pretty much, I'm going to be like at capacity for like movement from the jack. So this is kind of like a twofold, right? I have this in case I want to make like a giant blank for whatever reason. But then also I have this just as the platform, like I just talked about. And I drilled some speed holes in there because I saw that on a, on a cartoon, right? Speed holes are always a good thing. All right, we got lots of jugs. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to cut these up and I'm going to get these ready for the griddle. So originally what I was liking to do was shred a lot of these up. But whenever it comes to the griddle, like the shred goes really well with the toaster oven. By using the griddle, you can use some of these pieces. Like I used to hot dog this little part right here for the handle, but eh, I found that it was kind of unnecessary. So you can stick your pieces on here, right? So you can get them nice and flat and then you can twist them up so that you can get all the air bubbles or as many as you can out. And then after that, it's gonna go to the toaster oven. I'm gonna get that preheat in here in a second. That way I can keep everything nice and warm so that whenever it's time to press, I've got everything. And then one thing that I might even try to consider is taking the full glob out of the toaster oven. That way I can stick it in the press, make sure it's flat so that I can get it into this guy a little bit easier that way. And we'll get to pressing. We're gonna go in for the reveal right now. So let's check this out. We'll release. Magnets, magnets are cool. All right, so here we go. All right, we got some seepage, that's good. Is this thing, all right. Also, right, A and B, right there, so that's good. This should release, oh good, okay, perfect. I put some parchment on both, like the, the top squishy and the bottom one. Oh yeah, that's good, that's perfect. Look at that, boom, quick release, man. Parchment liquid sticky, that's what's up, all right. This looks pretty good, All right? We got some seepage here. That's a plus, right? Because we know that we got most of the bubbles out, I'm sure. It's a little bit dirty, but that's because of my gloves, right? I've got, I usually use these. Uh, they're nice because like, you know, they do protect me from the temperature, but I usually do a lot of plastic stuff when it's cold, especially like if my fingers get cold, I can feel the heat coming through, which is nice. But it does stick to the gloves, right? There's some like white crusty stuff there. There's some red, there's blue, right? From it's plastic. Some of the dirtiness, it'll rub off on here, especially whenever I'm twisting the bubbles out, right? We saw that earlier. It's all right though. We're gonna like smooth it out. We're gonna plane it with my planer and bob off all these little marbles and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm very, very happy with this. Especially let it cool to temperature because, right? Like we've seen in my previous videos, right? There's some dimpling going on here, but that's all right. We're just gonna lob it off. We're gonna smooth it out. We're gonna make it square. Oh, there's a little bit of a crag right here though too. And I'd be willing to bet that that's from like um, whenever I was twisting the pieces and sticking them in the toaster oven, right? Whenever you try to squish them together, there might be a little bit of a little bit of excess there that didn't really form together. Coercive, but that's all right. We'll deal with it. With the actual pressing action of it, right? A little bit of creakiness from the springs, but you know what? Everybody's garage door creaks. So that's really not what got me concerned. It was the fact that this guy was bowing. Like it had... It was like rocking. I stuck my ruler on it. But it had a lot more play with that ruler. So it's nice to know that it goes back to like its original position pretty much. So that's, man, yeah, I can deal with that. I'm not cranking it down like, you know, super crazy to get like full six ton force. This is like two centimeters deep. This is 23 and 19 centimeters. So right, math on that. You can max out of a little over 800 grams. I went with around 600 and 600 took me about eh, 10 bottles or so, nine or 10 bottles. So take that for what it's worth. Yeah, hopefully we'll see a lot more of these. I have an idea. Minimizing the bubbles are gonna be key because it would really affect the appearance of what I have planned on what I wanna do. So you might see that in a future video. Hopefully it will come out sometime in the relative future. So we'll see, right? But yo, know, that's, that's it for this video. Go ahead and leave me a comment. What would you squish?
all right? I got plastic, you can do like books, you can do stamps, you can do other stuff, right? But yo, again, we're going from trashy to classy, right? Not really, I mean, this looks terrible, but it gets the job done, right? The functionality is there. Stick with me on that, please. So, that's it. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.